Good day, folks. This is Chris Lepidon again, checking in for Trade Tax Plus, Center of Excellence. This is the second technical video uh, for April 2018, and as I promised, this video deals with uh, certain complications regarding the registration for that vendor. Now, <laughs> it's amazing that we're still talking about registration after that has been in place in South Africa for how many years now? 21, 22. It's been a long, it's been a long time. So. But that we still see massive errors being made at the cost of taxpayers, and I think a time is going to come where where um, cons consultants are going to be be sued for having not given taxpayers or vendors the correct advice or the best advice. Now let me give you a good example how badly things can go wrong. What the VAT Act says is you become liable to register as a VAT vendor from the month after. The month that your VAT re your taxable supplies first uh, reached a, a level of one million rand, which is generally known as the compulsory registration level. So once you hit a million, at the end of that month you must register, and thereafter you you um, are registered as a VAT vendor. Now, what the VAT Act further says is that. If you have not applied for registration and you became liable for registration then you are redeemed to be a, a, a vendor from the time that you should have registered as a VAT vendor, we became liable, and, and um, unless SARS allows you to register at a later date. But then, where you have applied for registration, the date SARS gives you is the date that you are registered. So what you need to, and that's a very important distinction to make. Remember, if you... Um, Back, if SARS backdates registration to the effective date, if you should have been VAT, re VAT registered, then you get the normal input tax deductions for that entire tax period. Now, if you make standard rated supplies, that's not a big issue because it will be normal, normally be net amount payable to SARS. If you're an exporter of goods, it's a huge issue because it means you're going to lose all the input tax deductions if that registration is not backdated. So, what happened in this specific case, based on all of that... Um, Deep background, in this specific case, the, the, the client applied for registration. They've been making uh, taxable supplies of a huge amount, but all exports, virtually all exports. So the exports were all zero rated. Then they discovered, oh gosh, we should have been registered as a bad vendor, and they applied for registration. And I'm not sure what date they put on the, on the date on that form that says the date that you were liable for registration, but SARS came back and, and said to them, okay, but don't worry, we'll register you from the 1st of April 2018. And that is what happened. And SARS, I presumably, that's what they say, uh, said they can claim the VAT back, uh, respect of zero rate supplies made in the past. Now, that is as far from the truth as you can imagine. And that probably was probably just a huge misunderstanding. Because the moment you apply for registration, the rule that you are deemed to be a vendor from the date that you should have registered is gone. That rule only applies where you have not applied for registration. So now you have applied for registration and SARS have given you a date, the 1st of April. That means that all the input tax for the period before that, from the time that you were liable to register to the time that you actually have registered, is gone. And can never ever be claimed unless SARS agrees to now reverse that registration and backdate you to the time that um, that you first became liable to be registered. So you can see how this thing is a two-edged sword. On the one side, you, if, if you are backdated, uh, registered backdated, then you must make certain you claim your input tax deductions in the tax periods that um, you have been backdated. Or the registration has been backdated that reduces your exposure to penalties and interest significantly if however you do you register and SARS does not backdate that that history in the past history disappears and if that would have been a net input tax deduction you forfeit that forever so the decision as to how you register and when you register and what you put on that form is critical in terms of uh, both the disclosure to SARS as full and proper disclosure and in terms of what is the impact going to be on you as a, as a business. Now this is just an example of how things can go really, really wrong. Now hopefully they can sort this out. 
uh, in the sense that I go back to SARS and they will backdate that and correct the um, registration. But this is something that never should have been like that in the first in the first instance. So that just gives an indication that compulsory registration is one of the major risks and is one of the least understood topics in VAT because we tend to think it belongs in the past. Um, it doesn't. It is critical for the purposes of day-to-day uh, -day administration of your businesses and, and, and the impact, the risk that it, that it poses to your business. So I hope that gives you something to think about, something to talk to your clients about, something to do in your, use in your business. In the next session, um, we will briefly then just have a short discussion around the issue of zero-rated supplies and what we should be, or the additional zero-rating of supplies and what we should be doing in, in that regard and how we should prepare ourselves. But for now, it's me, Chris Etterum, checking out for Trade Tax Plus, Center of Excellence.